Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Break Talos Principle 2, the only series where we have no principles, Talos or otherwise. So today we are here in Circular Oasis, which is South 3, and man oh man, it has been quite a while since I've uh, done this. Uh, I know it's going to sound weird to say that because it was actually the last episode that took forever to release, um, but that's just because of the way I edit videos. I always keep one uh, unreleased kind of ahead of time uh, so I can use that for the preview at the end of the video. But yeah, um, I've been on vacation, uh, I am getting ready to move out, so needless to say, this series has been kind of taking a backseat to life for a while. And I apologize ahead of time if this episode looks a little uglier than the rest. I don't know what it is with these desert areas that just lags me out really hardcore, but hopefully it'll be better uh, at the next episode. And um, one more thing, I don't know if it's because I've been taking such a break from this, or if this area is just particularly problematic. But I have spent so long, probably 15-ish hours, just trying to figure out how to break every puzzle here in a unique way. And uh, I'll talk about it throughout the episode, but I am mostly happy with uh, all the solutions that I've used here. Um, but it has been quite a difficult challenge trying to figure out how to do all these so the first thing we're going to do here is in puzzle one, and we are not actually going to solve it yet. We're just going to use, nope, other side to grab the inverter. And uh, the tower up there in the middle, there is a blue laser receptacle on it. And powering that um, raises a little connector up there, and we are going to use that to break a couple of puzzles. But first we need to power it, and we're just going to do that by connecting that there. And that's done. So now I am going to meet you guys over at number three, which is the first puzzle that we are actually going to break here. Alright, so three I think was the first puzzle in this area where something happened and I was like, yep, that right there is going to be how I break this puzzle. Um, so what we're going to do here is going to be very quick. We're just going to need to put this up here. Um, so there is uh, a lot of bugginess with the photo mode in this game. Um, there's a lot of really weird things that you can do to break physics. And one of them, uh, I alluded to in one of the previous episodes, you can just kind of use photo mode to reset your jump height. So you can just keep jumping midair as high as you want infinitely. And I decided not to use that in any of my breaks. Uh, one, just because it's such an easy thing to do that can just break everything. It's really not all that interesting or unique, I don't think. Um, but there is something else you can do with photo mode. And uh, it interacts with physics with certain things in a lot of really weird ways. Uh, for example, I like to call this photo surfing. Uh, if you put a box right on the corner of this... And I think it works right here. It might be because this is an elevator. Uh, maybe it works on other surfaces, but I haven't really tried it anywhere else. Uh, but if you put it right here and jump on it and then go into photo mode and then cancel, it'll kind of launch you in really interesting ways, and that's not the way I wanted it to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that one more time. I want to jump right over there to that pedestal. It's usually pretty reliable about getting me there. Yeah, there we go. That is solved. Now we are going to have to do some other stuff in here to uh, set up for some other puzzles. So give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to fast forward while I basically solve the puzzle again in the correct way this time. Uh, but it's still broken. It still counts because I have already solved it. So. Okay, now with the teleporter at the end, uh, all we have to do is make this jump over here to the wall. And I really hope I don't miss it, because if I do, I'm going to have to go through that whole process again to set it up. But we made it, so that's good. So we're just going to keep the teleporter up here. Can I still teleport? Yes, okay. And I'm just going to get both boxes up there. Starting with this one. And we're just going to leave them right outside the puzzle for now. Um, we will be using them for something else later on. 
And since we have to re-enter the puzzle to fix the teleporter, uh, since teleporters break if you break out of a puzzle like that, um, I'm just going to run around. It's a lot easier than jumping back in here and then running out there anyway. Okay, so let's get our second box out here. And then, I didn't notice this the first time I played this game, um, but solving the puzzle opens this little secret passageway and gives you a connector. And you're supposed to use that to connect the tower up there to the, uh, was it the Pandora statue that's over there. Um, we will not be doing that. We are going to, we still will be connecting it to the central tower, um, but we'll be doing other things with it that don't involve that statue. So we just want to connect it to the tower. And that connector right there, um, that raises when you power the statue, or when you power the tower. Alright, and with that in place, we're going to head over to number four next. Alright, so here in number four, um, this is one of the puzzles that I had a, kind of a hard time finding really interesting things to do with it. I was really hoping you'd be able to like break these circular um, rotating things. Uh, unfortunately, they're just really not that buggy, uh, which I hate to say, but it's true. Uh, there's only really one bug that I was able to figure out with it, and it didn't really prove useful for anything. And uh, I'll show that in just a minute here. So we want to connect this red laser to that, and we'll just put that connector right there. And then let's uh, just parkour a little bit. Yeah, so parkour is like kind of my default solution if I can't think of anything else to do with the puzzle. Because uh, you can pretty much always count on a puzzle being parkourable, where you just jump over a wall. Um, I just don't like to rely on that too much, because uh, I like to use more like puzzle-specific uh, glitches and cheeses. But anyway, um, the only thing I could really found... or. Own, the only thing I could really find that was broken about these is uh, if you put a driller on it right next to its own hole. Uh, the driller, let me take this thing here, is kind of broken. It like passes through its own hole. Uh, unfortunately, there just isn't really a way to use that, at least that I have found, to be able to cheese a puzzle. But anyway, uh, let's just put a stop to that. And with the red laser up there, we are going to head to the Northern Lost Puzzle. Okay, so this one is going to be just another parkour one for the most part. Um, we do use this red laser right here to open the first gate. And then... We're just going to jump up here, and using that same uh, grab jump trick that we used in one of the other episodes, uh, we just jump right in. Yeah, unfortunately, just could not really come up with anything more unique for this puzzle. Uh, it's fairly small, it's fairly simple, there aren't really a lot of moving parts to it. Uh, it's the only puzzle in the area that uses gravity panels, so you can't like break the grav shifter out and use it anywhere else, or bring another grav shifter into this one. But it is what it is. I'm fine with that so um let us go yes uh, actually we need to go to number four next and swap that red laser for a blue laser because we only needed it for red for that one okay so we're just gonna jump on top of this tree for the third time Disconnect it from the red source, connect it to the blue source, and place it down in the same spot. There we go. And with that done, um, let's go on to the other lost puzzle on the other side of the map, so I will meet you there. Okay, and for this one, um, not anything too exciting. Uh, we're going to just grab this and use it to get the second connector out. And then we just use the blue laser that is up on top of the tower. There we go. Now, the problem with this is there is nowhere that you can put this um, that isn't going to break at least something. 
you can see no matter where I put it it's either okay well that proves me wrong uh, so what I was going to say is that there's nowhere that you can put this laser um, that either isn't blocked by that wall right there that wall right there or blocks this red laser which obviously will close that gate um, and my solution to that was going to be uh, if you try to move this like off the button like just a little bit it doesn't let you and it does need to be on the button so that it can open that uh, barrier but it needs to be not centered to give us a little bit more space and uh, the solution to that is if you just put something on top of the button right there then you're free to put this wherever you want including right on the edge and then that will still hold down the button, but it will be offset, which gives us the room that we need to solve this. Just like that. Um, but anyway, uh, as you saw, that wasn't mm, completely necessary. But I still wanted to show it off, so whatever. Alright, now with that done... Um, let me get the two boxes that we left outside of number three, and uh, we're going to bring them over to number two right there. So I will meet you over there. Alright, and with these here, uh, the only other thing we're going to need is the inverter from puzzle number one. Uh, and that is powering that tower, but we are all done with the tower laser, so uh, let's just go grab that real quick. Alright, and the way that we get this out, um, right here, you can jump up on this little tiny thing. And then onto that strip of metal. And then from there onto this little corner and we're just going to jump across there and then we're going to need to hook left around this wall to get on top of there um okay uh so i guess i will be showing you um the photo mode jump uh exploit after all because uh, I'm not going to reset this whole area just because I soft locked myself, soft locked myself in here. So I guess you get to see me use it. And there we go. So now you know what that looks like. Uh, like I said, it's kind of exploity, and I know that's uh, funny for me to be saying that, uh, but it's kind of exploity in a way that's not really fun. If you can just jump wherever you want, whenever you want. But anyway, um, now that we're up here, we can run around and take this over to number two. So number two here gave me so much trouble when I was routing this area. Um, I was just trying to figure out, like how I wanted to do it in a unique and interesting way and I'm still not like super happy with the solution that I came up with um, but it's about the best I could come up with in like the 15 hours I was working on this place uh, so my initial I wanted the initial thing I wanted to do was to use the tower laser up there to exploit it um, but the problem with that is this the layout of this area is so simple there's just a blue uh, red laser over there and a blue laser right there and you just need to use a blue laser to open that gate, and then right past that there's a red receptacle to open the final gate to the end. And there isn't really a point to bringing in an external laser uh, like that, because the blue one is right here and the red one is right there. So like, any solution that uses the lasers 
isn't any easier than just using the proper lasers inside the puzzle, if that makes sense. Um, but I do get to show off another trick here that I discovered. Um, if you stack two boxes like this, uh, normally you cannot, like, climb them. There's no way to get on top of them. Uh, no way to get on top of the first one, because the second one is on top of it. However, if you grab it... Let me move this inverter over here so I can move it. Um, we're going to be using photo mode to bug this again. If you jump in and then immediately go into photo mode after placing it... Uh, ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me try moving it over just a little bit. Yeah, so you just need to place it and then immediately go into photo mode. And then, normally from here you're not able to jump uh, because the game knows that you shouldn't be able to jump in this spot. Um, but if you set your pose, uh, and the reason we need to set a pose is because if you try to set your Z offset, uh, normally it just doesn't do anything. But once we set a pose, now we can move ourselves up and down. And if we move ourselves all the way up and get out of photo mode, it will just move us to the top box. Uh, which it really shouldn't be allowed to do, but that's how it works, I guess. And then from there, we can just put the inverter inside. And we'll just open this first gate. We'll uh, keep that there for now. I need to go and grab another connector here. We're just going to completely ignore that closed gate. Okay. And we'll use this to open the blue gate right there. And then we'll take this and open the final gate. So yeah, um, like I was talking about, I wanted to be able to use like maybe the red laser here and then use a connector to move the red laser from there to here, to here, and then to that. But like, you don't even need that red laser up there. You could just do exactly the same thing using this red laser instead and it changes nothing. And I don't like solutions that just seem pointless. I at least want them to make the puzzle easier because it's kind of the whole point of this series. Um, and there is another way to just parkour this puzzle. You can just jump up on top of here and then around like that and on top of here across the opening. And then you can just jump in, but again, that's just really lazy if I do that for every single puzzle, so it's really only a last resort. Um, but anyway, with all that out of the way, we're going to need to bring this back to puzzle number one, which we'll be using later. So we can just get it right over the wall like this. So let's go put this back, and then we're going to come back for those boxes. And then we're just going to leave it right on top of this rock, and we'll get back to that later. So let's uh, go ahead and get those boxes, and we're going to move them over to the top of this wall right there. Alright, um, so I didn't really intend for this video to just turn into uh, explaining all the problems I run into while recording these videos, or while routing the, the areas, uh, but that's kind of what it's turned into, and this is another example of that. Um, so down there is puzzle number five, which is the next one we are breaking, and I really thought it would be super cool if the solution for it was to like just jump down into it and bypass the whole puzzle altogether. Uh, but the problem with that is there is a kill plane about halfway down this fall that will kill you as soon as you cross it. Um, so you just cannot survive the jump down there. And I tried a whole bunch of different methods to get down there. Um, first of all, obviously, I just tried jumping in, and that didn't work. And then I tried seeing if I could ride a box, just like stand on a box as it slid off the edge, and if that would um, let me survive the fall, which it does not. And then after that, I tried kind of hopping down just a little bit at the time because there's these little ledge things that stick out that you can land on and i was hoping if you moved slow enough uh the kill plane would not affect you uh they still do uh, i also tried using photo mode um to see because you know we've already glitched a few things in this area using photo mode uh, so i was hoping i'd be able to pass through the plane 
kind of like right after using photo mode, but that did not work either. And then the last thing I tried um, is kind of a last ditch effort, and I was really hoping this would work because it would be hilarious. Um, unfortunately, it just doesn't. Uh, but if you drop the cubes in just the right spot, they will kind of bounce off of some collision down there, and they'll kind of go flying. And I was hoping that I could land them right into the middle of the area um, in the puzzle there and use it to solve it, but they just don't really go far enough for that. Uh, so you see if I drop it, they kind of go flying like that. Um, and you can get them kind of close, but I tried for like an hour just bouncing them just over and over and over again, and I could not get them inside the puzzle. Or if I did get them inside the puzzle, they'd land on the wrong side of the barrier, where they'd just be useless to me. Um, but we're just going to drop those down, because we do need them outside number five. Um, so yeah, let's go down there. Oh yeah, and then I did want to point out, there actually is one place, or two places I guess, uh, there's one place that you can actually uh, drop down here safely without dying, and it is right here in these corners, just like that. And there's another one right on the other side in the same corner. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's useless, I guess it gets you down here faster, um, but obviously you can't fall down here and land in any of the puzzles, so, oh well. Okay, so for puzzle number five, uh, we're just going to stack both boxes over here around the corner. Just like that. And then what we're going to do, um, this will be kind of another parkour one, but we're going to be using this box to kind of do like a grand tour around the whole puzzle to get to the end. Um, but we're going to put this right there, and we're going to use that to jump up on top, and then we're going to use it once again uh, without letting it fall. Let's try putting it right there. Yeah, that works. And we're going to grab it again, and we're going to run along the wall here. And we're going to use it a third time to jump up on top of that ledge. We'll hop our way across. Mm, I think we can get back. Oh, no. Can I save myself? No, I can't. Okay. Let's just run around and do that again. Okay, so grab that. Jump on here. Get on top of this round statue. Put the cube on the statue. Not like that. Yeah, that worked. I'll run along the wall once again. No, not like that. That's a good blue Okay, grab that again. Jump along the wall without falling off this time. Mm, okay, I managed to save it though. Or have I? Okay, there we go. That was much easier. Ooh, a lot of weird collisions in this area. Let's uh, try jumping with the box again. Can put it right there? No, we cannot. Okay. Man, that's harder than I thought. Okay. These boxes just do not want to stay close for me. Okay, third time is the charm, question mark. Okay, there we go. Finally got across that bit. And we're just going to continue to run around. We actually don't need the box. I don't know why I'm still carrying it. Oh yes, I do, because we need it right here. And there we go. And with that done, we are just going to use that box. And we're going to bring it over to number six. I'm going to be honest, I really didn't think through 6 much at all because I found a solution that just kind of works well enough and called it good. Um, so I didn't really put a lot of thought into this one. But we can just jump a box in over that wall there. We're going to open that. And we're just going to use this inverter here to solve the puzzle as easy as that. And with that done, um, we are actually going to use this inverter that's in here. Or sorry, the accumulator, not the inverter. Um, and in order to get this out of the puzzle, what we're going to do is put it right in this corner. And you can just kind of drop it right there in the tree. And then we'll just run around, leave the puzzle. And get around to the back side. 
where we will once again jump up on top of that little slope. And we can grab it. So we're just going to run this over to... Let me see. Okay, so we're actually going to leave this lower area and go back up top with this. Alright, so what we want to do with this, um, we are going to need to charge it with a blue laser, so I'm going to need to run around here so I can get line of sight on that connector up there. But you know what, since that's not being powered, that's not going to work. Um, oh yeah, I can just charge it right over here, that's right. Just get line of sight on that connector. Oop, almost dropped it off the edge. Okay, there we go, that's all we need. And we're going to run it over here, where we can see puzzle number seven from. It's going to be the fourth, so one, two, three, and four, right here. And that gives us a perfect bird's eye view of that blue connector way down inside puzzle number seven there. So we're just going to connect that there. And we're going to jump down once again, just because it's more fun than taking the elevator. All right, and number seven is going to be another very quick solve. Um, we're just going to put that inverter there to power the fan. Which, I guess... <laughs> I guess we didn't really need to do that, did we? Anyway, we're just going to come up here, and this is going to be solved for us already. All right, and then we are going to need to take that inverter. charge of solving these. And smuggle it out of the puzzle, which is extremely simple in this one, because we just need to do that. Now let's bring it right over to puzzle number 8. We're not going to be using this in puzzle number 8. Um, we just need to leave it here while we solve it. Now this one um, is a really interesting one, because I did find what I believe to be an unintended solution, because you don't even use the third connector. Uh, and it's quite simple, uh, so I think it was just an unintentional alternate solution. Uh, but all we've got to do is just power that gate. We'll run in here. And then we'll rotate this. And we'll use that laser to open this door. And then you just come out, and then you steal this, and use it to power the blue from this side. And you run back in here, and you rotate it once more. And then it's solved. And uh, the usual solutions I find online for this one uh, are a lot more complicated than that. So I don't think that's how they wanted you to solve it. So I'm going to call that uh, broken enough for me. Alright, let's take this inverter, and let's go finally do our final puzzle, uh, number one. So I'll meet you over there. Alright, so the thing I'm doing for number one, um, first we're going to need to smuggle both of these in. I'm going to see if I can... I eh, might have to do them one at a time, that might be annoying. Oh, I don't want to actually, I want to drop it, not connect it. Okay, let's see if that works. That way I won't have to do this twice. Um, so normally, when you do number one, uh, there's a laser over there and a laser over here. This is the only laser that you can use to solve the puzzle. Uh, that laser is completely useless. That's pretty much just a red herring. Or a blue herring, because it's a blue laser. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to finally give that blue laser uh, its time in the limelight. So to do that, we're going to use the same thing we did before to get up on top. Oop. Try again. Okay. And we're just going to run over here and grab both of those inverters. There's one. And there's two. Nice. Alright, we're just going to drop them both into the puzzle. Okay, so as I was saying, um, for this one, we're going to... 
instead use the left laser to solve this. In order to do that, you do need two inverters, um, which you obviously do not have when you do the puzzle correctly. So we're just going to put one there, and then invert it again back to blue. And then just use this to get our green laser. And there we go. Um, this may be the first time in history that somebody's actually solved this puzzle using the left laser. I really hope that's true, because that would be awesome. But anyway, um, with that, that is all ten of our puzzles in this area. So next we're going to do the sparks. And our first spark is going to be over here behind puzzle number two, right next to us. And it's right here in this uh, interesting little nook behind puzzle number two. And the next one is going to be down at number five, so I will meet you there. Oh yeah, I just wanted to show off something right here. Um, while trying to figure out how to break number two, I had the idea to like put a connector up on top of the puzzles to like directly uh, open one of those gates, which would have made it a lot simpler. Um, unfortunately, there isn't really a way up there that I could find. I did find this, and uh, really annoyingly, you can get almost all the way to the top, and then you hit this plane that just forces you down, no matter what you do. See, right there, it's like they're teasing you. Come on. You can get almost all the way up. And now I'm just failing. Okay, there we go. And then you hit the top, and then it just slides you right back down again. And I don't know why that is, but very infuriating. But anyway, let's uh, go get that other spark. So the spark placement in this area was kind of uninspired. Uh, this one is also just in a little nook behind the puzzle. Um, really think they could have found some more unique places to put them, but oh well. So with both sparks out of the way, uh, we're going to do the Easter eggs next. And the very first Easter egg is up back kind of behind puzzle number one. Um, so I will meet you over there. Alright, and way out here in this wasteland, um, we will find a rock that doesn't quite look like all the other rocks, and that is because it is a stone talus. Uh, this is an enemy from the newer Legend of Zelda games, uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Interestingly, it gets its name from the same place that the talus principle does, uh, which is the bronze robot statue uh, automaton, I guess, uh, from Greek mythology called the talos or the talus. So yeah, um, our next easter egg is going to be over here by the gold puzzle. Alright, so this right here is a purple hologram of something called a cryosphinx, uh, which is basically a sphinx with the head of a ram. Uh, this was believed to be one of the symbols of the Egyptian god Amun, and uh, it's made its way into this game. So yeah, uh, next easter egg, over that way-ish. So way out here, um, just a little bit past this conspicuously placed tree in the middle of nowhere. I believe it's behind this rock right here. Yep, it is the Out of Time uh, license plate from Back to the Future. Cool. Okay, next Easter egg. All the way across, way over by puzzle number three. Alright, so up here at this Pandora statue, um, if you just walk right through the base of it like this and keep going in a straight line... We will be ambushed by some... Beheaded Kamikazes! 
The, uh, of course, the quintessential enemy from the Serious Sam games. I don't know why, but I just love the sound that these things make. Of course, I mean the uh, sparkling sound, not the screaming sound. Alright, that's a really unique Easter egg. I really like that one. It's probably top three in this whole game so far. Okay. And we only have one more Easter egg left. You can probably guess what it is, uh, but we're going to have to solve the Tetramino Bridge to get to it first, so I'll meet you over there. And before we go up, we're just going to go into photo mode right here. And right around the side of the tower, as high up as we can go. It is uh, weirdly going to show the lighting effect from inside the tower, but right here we have the kitty face. Of course, always got to be one. Alright, so with that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get the tower. I will meet you guys at the base camp. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a change of plans at the end of this video, and uh, you'll see why in a minute. Um, so let's just uh, get this out of the way. Alright, so the megastructure visit that's coming up um, doesn't really have any actual puzzles in it. It's just a whole bunch of tetromino bridges, and there isn't really a way to glitch those out uh, that I know of. So we're just going to skip through them super fast and uh, get to the beginning of the first western area. So, um, yeah, give me a few minutes. I'm just going to kind of do a super cut here of just like all the main points, and then I will meet you on the other side. the flame been hidden by fear and mystery. It is time to put away these childish things and for you to know the truth of the Alpha and the Omega, of the beginning and the end. I will send you visions of the truth, but remember that prophecies are a heavy burden. She's just a person person who lost her way. She solved the lost puzzle. 
What's the point of all of this? Why the puzzles, the towers, the entities? What are we being tested for? It's control over physics. If we can gain control of the megastructure, we can do anything we want. It's all up to us. Unless we fail. Is everyone okay? All good. I'm taking us back now. That's a relief. All right, I told you that was going to be a lot of tetrominal bridges. Uh, but anyway, with that out of the way, it is time to start heading over to do the west and final side of the island. Um, we've only got a few more episodes left, I think, and our series will be done. Kind of crazy to think about that, huh? Um, but anyway, if you have anything to say, any feedback, anything like that, just leave me a comment. I love reading them. Uh, and join us next time as we tackle West 1, the Western Delta. Peace. It gives us about 30 seconds on the clock to get into position, which should be plenty of time. And then we just sit here and we wait for it to happen. Come on, help me out. Yes! <laughs> I knew that would work. <laughs>